Okay, uh, thank you very much. Why do we care black holes so much? Um, one of the reasons is that it provides testing ground for theories of quantum gravity. In fact, here, even uh, the basic questions still remain debatable. For example, do black holes evolve with unitarity, consistent with quantum mechanics? Or does an informing observer pass the event horizon smoothly, as suggested by general relativity? Or are dynamics local outside the quantumly stretched uh, horizon, as you could uh, usually postulate in quantum field theory? And these questions started, of course, by the famous paper by Stephen Hawking in the 70s, but we are still not reaching consensus, as exemplified by recent work in AMPS, um, Armhey, Marol, Polchinski, and Surrey. And important point, important thing here is that this issue involves all three pillars of modern physics, okay? quantum mechanics, general relativity, and statistical mechanics. So we hope that understanding this issue will lead to some way or maybe long way towards the understanding of microscopic theory of quantum gravity, which is elusive so far. And in this talk today, I want to present a picture that aims to give some answers to these questions. And I will argue that a key to address these issues is to understand how semi-classical space-time emerges from the microscopic or fundamental theory of quantum gravity. In particular, I argue that uh, degrees of freedom described by semi-classical theory is really, really only a tiny subset of the whole degrees of freedom in the microscopic theory, and that the physics of black hole information concerns these vast degrees of freedom, which is totally not describable in semi-classical theory, but which you can view as delocalized in certain specific, uh, with a certain specific configuration around the black hole. Okay? Um, the talk is mostly based on the work with my students, Fabio Sanchez and Sean Weinberg. And this picture has been developed gradually, but the latest one uh, with all the elements in it was written in uh, last December, in these two papers, and also based on some other uh, paper as well. So let's start uh, from reminding uh, what we have been thinking, what we've been learning about the quantum mechanics of black holes so far. As is well known, it started from information loss paradox by Hawking. Let's think about some big black hole, classical black hole, and think about sending in or dropping some, say, book A into this black hole. What happens? What happens is that because of time delay, this book will be absorbed into the horizon, slow down, slow down, slow down, absorbed into the horizon, and then this black hole will later evaporate in the form of a Hawking radiation. Okay? That's the, what the semi classical analysis will suggest. Now, let's do another experiment. Instead of book A, let's send the book B with, say, the same mass. Okay? And because it's the same mass, oh, this book B will be absorbed into the horizon, and then no here theorem will say that this black hole is the same, and therefore the later evolution is also the same, so the final Hawking radiation is also the same. I'm too much simplifying this, but it's essentially that's the, uh, uh, the picture of this information loss. Namely, final state is exactly the same, even if initial states are different. This kind of situation we never hit in the history of, of, of physics, because if you have complete knowledge about the current state of the system, then usually you can put that back in a equation motion and solve backwards in time. You must be able to solve initial condition in Newtonian equation and Schrodinger equation as well. But in this case, the final state is exactly the same. If that's the case, you completely lose the information. Namely, unitarity is lost. It's not inversible. Okay? But now, we don't think that this is a situation. Based on many theoretical uh, progress, but the one suggestion comes from, OK, let's put this entire system in the ADS and map to the CFT, okay, ADS CFT. And then we know conformal field theory is unitary, so all these processes is, is unitary. Or we believe our belief on quantum mechanics uh, increased by many experiments and so on. So we now think that's not the case. If you drop the different book A or B, 
then the final state Hawking radiation is slightly different, the quantum state. That does not mean that spectrum is different, necessarily. It could be spectrum, could be black body. But quantum state could be different, right? It's entanglement structure could be different. Left, right, plus right, left. Or rest plus left, right, minus right, left. States are different, but it's a spectrum could be the same, and so on. Okay? So just, okay? But a quantum state is different. So if you have a complete quantum state, put back into Schrodinger equation, so backwards in time, we now think that uh, the initial state can be recovered, recovered by inversely solving time evolution. Okay? At this point, the black hole is not, not nothing special. Of course, information becomes invisible because it's become tiny, it's detailed information. It's like burning book, burning book A, book B, the final state looks same, just dirty airs and ashes and so on. But information is there only in the sense that if you know entire location molecules and velocities, then you can send sort of back, backwards in Newtonian equation to recover initial state. So this looks like a conventional object, okay? So just but interesting thing about gravity come when we view the same experiment from falling observer's point of view, okay? Let's imagine that uh, 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 you, you're falling with the book, and we, again, drop the book A, okay? So you're falling with the book, but because of the equivalency principle, because you're falling, freely falling, you essentially don't feel gravity, except for I mean, weak tidal force, which is completely weak in a large black hole. So entire information of the book, whether the book is A or similarly B, will be inside the horizon at late time, clearly, because you're falling with the book, and the book itself is inside. So at later time, the book is inside. But we just argue that if unitarity, as viewed from exterior point of view, is, is right, then entire information about the initial state must be outside the horizon at late time. You must be able to recover what was A or B from Hawking radiation. But now the information is inside. If you describe from the same, same, same experiment from different, different strains, which is right. You may think that, okay, the information could be inside and both outside, that's fine, what's, what's wrong with it? But that contradicts the basic theorem of quantum mechanics, which is no cloning theorem. Whole quantum information cannot be copied, okay? So uh, the argument is simple. If you have a copy machine of copying spin up to spin up up and spin down to down down, so if such a copy machine exists, you can send the superposition up plus down to that copy machine. And any operation in quantum mechanics is linear. So what you will expect is up, up plus down down. But if you want to copy these states, then what you want is up plus down whole square, and you lose interference down. Okay? But that's why, by the way, our, our, our world classicalizes. You can, the classical world, you can compare information. You have experiment. You tell, uh, I tell you, and you tell somebody, and you can compare. This copying of the information cannot include all interference down. It, it violates quantum mechanics. Okay? So it can't be the like, full information, both inside and exterior, in a sense, is violating quantum mechanics. Right? And this is, I did not use any string theory or loop corner, whatever, or, uh, no explicit model. This is unitarity, equivalence principle, and linearity of quantum mechanics. Those are in crash, and, and that people are confused pretty much. But one ingenious suggestion was made, which is known under the name of complementarity in the 90s by uh, uh, Saskin and Toft and companies. And here we can ask, is it really contradiction? Can you observe this experiment to be, you are both an exterior observer and infolding observer? Can it be at the same time? No, either, okay? If you describe system from exterior, then the picture is that book will be absorbing the horizon, and then later come back, the whole information coming back as a Hawking radiation. That's it. If you have a horizon, you cannot access interior. So you should regard this interior space-time absent. You cannot, even in principle, okay, at this level. Similarly, if you do, if you're following it, the book will be interior, true. Okay, no, interior space-time now is there. But can you access Hawking radiation? No, you're already inside. You can never access Hawking radiation. You should not include all these things in your description of the, of the, of the physics. So if you focus on something you can uh, operationally do, you don't have uh, a real contradiction. That was the suggestion. 
Okay. That's really great. And, and so the lesson here is that including both late coating radiation, which contains information about the initial state, and interior space time inside the horizon is just double counting. Okay? So it's either, okay, in, in a case that you're waiting at the exterior and then jumping later, then of course you have to do carefully like some part of it from exterior, some part of the interior, but it's not all, okay? it's clearly not all. Okay? Something you can access is the only thing you should include. And that corresponds to like, equal time hypersurface must be chosen carefully. Because if you choose this kind of equal time hypersurface, then this equal time hypersurface goes through both late Hawking radiation and the informing object. Okay? Then you have a copy of the two things. And the point is that this equal time hypersurface, which is nothing wrong at the level of semi-classical gravity, you can choose the equal time hypersurface on which the curvature is much, much smaller than Planck scale. Okay? And we usually think the semi-classical field theory is completely applicable at that kind of situation. Okay? But then this leads to exactly this paradox. Of course, this is not something single observer can see. This is a Penrose tapish diagram. What single observer can see is this uh, uh, within this triangle. But usually, quantum field theory doesn't care. You just have some equal time hypersurface, and then you can do quantum field theory. But that is overcounting. So this is a hypothesis or, or, or proposal beyond <laughs> Uh, a usual quantum field theory in space spacetime at long distances. Okay? But the hope here was that now by taking carefully this equal, hyper -time, uh, equal time hypersurface only within the region single observer can access, then you can still use quantum field theory and then address all these questions in a semi classical picture. That was a hope. Okay? But now there was a famous Amps argument <laughs> Oh, that may not be the case. That may not be enough. The here's the argument. It's called five war argument. You must have heard. The point is that you can still formulate the problem within the single causal patch, namely in the space-time region where a single observer can, in principle, access. Okay? You can have still the problem in that space-time region. You can't use this type of argument. Okay, you cannot access this part, and the, one, the other part, part person can access this part, but not that part. No, within a single patch, you still can formulate the problem. That was the, the point of AMPS. Okay? Let's look at this. Okay? Suppose you're just falling from in the past, and then enter the black hole, and then hit the singularity. So this region, between 45 degrees line, this inside this, is what uh, uh, you can get the signal from. Okay? Now, you have Hawking emission earlier, right? the black hole have a Hawking emission, and then later Hawking emission. If the theory is unitary, that means that these two Hawking radiation, which is emitted earlier and emitted later, must be entangled. Right? Because you, you start from pure state, you must recover pure state. Okay? So pure state, some part is in black hole, some part is black hole, some part is coming earlier, some part coming later. These must be correlated in such a way that it go back to the pure state. Okay? So if unitarity is there in this picture, and then of course late Hawking quantum and early Hawking quantum must be entangled. Entangled means up, down, plus, down, up, or something, okay? So it just have to be entangled, correlated, quantum correlated. On the other hand, if this horizon region is smooth, it's like uh, mostly Minkowski if you fall in, then any mode just outside the, the black hole horizon and just inside must be correlated because Minkowski vacuum is whole of the correlation. If you put some hypothetical sur surface in any Minkowski region, and they look at the mode in, in both sides, then it's maximally entangled. That's just the field theory. According to field theory analysis, that's the case. But the problem is that these two are not possible to, be, to, 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 to happen simultaneously. Because if one is in, uh, entangled with some uh, uh, other Bob is entangled with Alice, this, that's it. Bob cannot be entangled with other Charlie. This is called monogamity of entanglement. This is just mathematical statement. You can easily prove it. So unitarity requires these B and C to be entangled, and smooth horizon requires A and B to be entangled, and those requirements happen within a single causal patch, namely a single person can access. You cannot use complementarity. That was uh, the basic argument. And they said the simplest uh, possibility may be, okay, unitarity is so sacred in corner mechanics, and maybe horizon, maybe not. Uh, so general relativity is totally wrong. If you just jump into black hole, you just something 
stupid happens. Even though this horizon could be 10 kilometer, 100 kilometer, it's a big thing. We're not talking about Planck scale quantum gravity. It's a long distance thing. Yeah, it's a drastic conclusion. So it's good to remember, because this is just, uh, 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 it may be confused, so this is just uh, uh, like, um, uh, just note, that you may think the Hawking quantum, the wavelength is of order m, in unit of Planck mass, okay? Planck, Planck length to be one thing from now on. So Hawking wavelength is a big m, and Schwarzschild radius is two m. So Hawking quantum wavelength is of order Schwarzschild radius. So this near black hole region is just, okay? If you send in a Hawking area, only Hawking, one Hawking uh, wavelength, that is not correct. If the semi-classical theory is correct, if you send in, for example, Hawking type soft photon, and then because of blue shift, uh, uh, wavelengths become shorter and shorter and shorter and shorter and shorter. And you can change, to do that, you can change the coordinate from Schwarzschild radius R to essentially log of R, it's called totalist coordinate, R star, and then in that coordinate, R star, then Hawking wavelength stays the same if you solve the propagation in that coordinate. And then you can see near black hole region, the Schwarzschild horizon is 2M, and the black hole thermal atmosphere end at the 3M, because that's the where the black hole uh, gravitational potential has a barrier. And those regions are big region, okay? The semi-classically big region. And if any information is uh, stored in black hole, okay, which is the stretch, quantum stretch horizon, and then if that information has to go out, then those information, whatever that is, whatever that is, this is entangled with the early Hawking radiation, and then you're tossed. That's it. And Whatever that is, it's entangled with the RD radiation, which is needed to recover unitarity. And then the smooth horizon required, that mode is entangled with the other partner mode in the other side of the horizon. And just, okay, you can't do that. So here is again basic crash of principles, which was not solved by complementary only, apparently, at least that's the AMSU claim, that I use unitarity and physics local, just, okay? So whatever that is, you don't need the detail outside the stretch horizon, and then equivalence principle. All these three cannot uh, simultaneously be true. And clearly this is a big uh, 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 issue, uh, a very annoying issue, so many people uh, studied various uh, uh, aspects of it. Um, here I'm, uh, I want to tell you about one, uh, uh, our picture, our own picture, how this can be avoided, and how we can get the quantum evolution of black holes without firewall. At least we can avoid the argument, because we cannot compute everything like it's actually horizontally smooth from fundamental theory. Current technology does not allow that. If it is, it, if it is allowed, somebody must have computed it already. <laughs> So, but at least you can have, and it's a very natural picture from our point of view. So we start from the question, what is actually the semi-classical theory? The semi-classical theory is the theory of quantum matter and radiation, it's a quantum, on classical exact space-time background. That's how we treat the system okay, in semi-classical theory or semi-classical picture, whatever, even semi-classical string theory on semi-classical background, background, we're still doing that. Okay? But uncertainty in principle says that there is no such exact space-time. Okay? You must have uncertainty. Clearly, because you have a time scale for the evolution of the space-time, and you have energy uncertainty. Okay? For example, think about dynamically evolving, dynamically formed black hole, then the time scale for the evolution of a quantum state is of order m in unit of Planck scale, okay? The Planck length to be, to be one, because that's a time scale of one emission of the Hawking photon. The state become orthogonally different state after time scale of order m, okay? So you have the characteristic time scale of order m. That means that the characteristic energy uncertainty must be the inverse of that, and because the system is non-relativistic, that means that the characteristic uncertainty of black hole mass m is of order one over m. So whatever we're calling the black hole of mass m must be actually something between m and m plus one over m. Okay? The superposition of these things, because if it's an exact energy eigenstate, it must not be evolving, it must be stationary state. But we're talking about the, the black hole formed in the specific time and evolving with the time scale of order m. Okay? So how many possible ways to superpose the energy eigenstate within this energy interval of one over m, from m to m plus one over m? Okay? You have a lot of state. How many state you are there between m and m plus one over m? Classically, continuously infinity, of course, right? You can have m, m plus 0.1 m, m plus 0.2 m, m plus 0.001 m. It's continuously infinity. But quantum mechanically, this number become finite and discrete. Like, 
harmonic oscillator. Okay? So amplitude is not now continuous. You can have discrete. And logarithm of that number corresponds to Bekenstein Hawking entropy. Okay? So it's not like exponentially new degrees of freedom show up when you go into quantum mechanics. It's not. Of course, reduction. Okay? Quantum mechanics is a reduction of the, of the states. And it becomes a discrete. Continuous thing became a discrete. So that means all these things, without exciting anything around the black hole, all these things, because it's just slightly different M in some sense, all these are vacuum states. So what semi-classical theory describes as a vacuum state, black hole vacuum, correspond to many, many, many different microstates. Of course, it's parameterized by K, index K, from 1 to E3, e to the S, 0, Bekenstein Hawking entropy at the reading order. So the general um, uh, states, general microstates for black hole, is parameterized by this index, which is a microscopic of the space time. You can even imagine that this is a slightly different M. Of course, it's not exact M, because then it will be energy eigenstate, so it's a slight different superposition. Okay? But um, uh, the number of independent states between M and M plus deck one over M, that index K, and the semi-classical excitation on top of it. Suppose you have a matter, really, or detector, or you, okay? in, the, in the near black hole region. So these are our microstates. Of course, these two indexes are really not separable, as, as I will argue later. But, but you can imagine like this, this is the case. And in fact, this index A is a tiny, tiny perturbation on the bekenstein hawking entropy. This was first estimated in 1993. And then if you think about the most entropic configuration of usual matter, you, you, can, you can put in a certain region, the entropy is much smaller than the area. Okay, area to three quarter naively. Yeah? So this is, and area is a macroscopic quantity. So this like, semi-classical perturbation is tiny perturbation. Most of the degrees of freedom you can store in certain region in space time is vacuum degrees of freedom. Okay? And that corresponds to slightly different M. You can, you can think that way. And then semi-classical, what is a semi-classical theory? That is, semi-classical picture is the one which you obtain by coarse graining. You're just not looking at this index K. Technically, you're just taking maximal uh, uh, mixture of this, this K index. That's what the semi theory is. So what you're calling black hole vacuum state is already a maximal mixture state of the different K. So it's clear how can get the non-unitary result. You, you, you're talking about mixture state already. Okay? That is what the semi theory is from the beginning. So this leads to the picture that what is described by the semi-classical theory, like really matter is falling in, you then, that's like this index A. That is a tiny, tiny, tiny subset of entire degrees of freedom you can have in the fundamental theory, which is counted by bekenstein hawking entropy and the configuration, possible configuration of vacuum from semi-classical point of view, of course. It's excitation from fundamental theory point of view, of course. Black hole is excitation. Okay? So, and the physics of black hole information concerns this major part of the degrees of freedom. So if you're looking at the degrees of freedom in a semi-classical picture, what is a mode and so on in semi-classical space-time, you certainly won't be able to get anything, okay? So minute you imagine that uh, 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 the space-time picture, going to space-time picture, you're already coarse grain, and then talking about the mode or something you're tossed, okay? You'll never be able to understand in a correct way. That's the, the, the mis that, uh, misconception, I would say. Okay? And the, how this guy, this K degrees of freedom, interacts with the exterior system, like your detector, if you put the detector, you can have information back. And this K can be viewed as distributed in a fixed frame, can be distributed according to uh, uh, thermodynamic entropy you can calculate in semi theory, which is strongly peaked towards the horizon. That's right? Because entropy can be visible even in the, system, in the theory after coarse graining microscopic degrees of freedom. You can calculate entropy of this desk even without knowing, you're actually counting microscopic atoms. Okay? You can calculate by thermodynamics and then where the degrees of freedom is. Okay? So, that's, so it's completely delocalized. And because it's completely delocalized, because you can calculate the thermodynamic uh, thermal atmosphere of the class, semi-classical black hole, and that entropy also is in the edge of the zone. Okay, of, the, of this black hole zone. So at the semi-classical level, you don't need to bring the information from there to this. No mode which is propagating in this big region, so I'm an atmosphere from here, if there is any mode in any sense, you're tossed. Okay? This must be entangled with our radiation, this must be entangled with this, okay, amps, okay? firewall. But you don't need to, because this information is, in, is, is a slightly different M, or slightly different configuration of space-time, okay? slightly different M. And depending on what slightly different M, the Hawking quantum shows up at the edge of the zone, 
uh, that's around three times m, which is macroscopically away from through the horizon, and then it goes goes up. Okay, and, and because this extracts energy from black hole, of course you can you, you excite the negative energy excitation. It's go in going, and later a negative energy excitation hit the horizon and black hole uh, dissipate into smaller mass. Okay. The negative energy excitation is totally fine, right? Because negative energy with respect to background, of course, this is not negative energy on top of Minkowski. Okay? This is standard. So this is the right picture, okay? The semi-classical rainbow. You should not think that the entropy is there at uh, the uh, horizon, or uh, and then horizon, and then comes out. No. Then you're done, okay? You're tossed, okay? And that's fine because information is like this information is space time, delocalized. Yeah? Because state, information on state is always delocalized, EPR pair and so on. Yeah? That has nothing to do with Hamiltonian being uh, non local. Yeah? So now, at the micro microscopic area, what's happening? Okay? I can give you the even uh, toy uh, 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 a bit model. Suppose initially the black hole micro state is 1, 2, 3, 4, two, dot, 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 to 2 n, and how these states evolve. You may think. Okay, you extract one bit of information to Hawking quantum. You may be like a Hawking quantum uh, state is R1 if it's odd, okay, microstate, and Hawking uh, state is R2 if it's even, okay? That's a, a model of one bit of extraction. And then now you excite the negative energy excitation to conserve energy, and then one, two, three, four. Okay? You may think this is the most naive way of extracting, but it's happening here, not there, okay? But this doesn't work. By the way, this, was, this issue was also discussed in AMPS. Because if that's the case, these states, because black hole mass m, on top of that you have a negative energy excitation to compensate Hawking quantum energy, this state has energy m minus delta m, later have to be dissipated or relaxing into the black hole of mass m minus delta m, whose entropy is smaller than 2n, <laughs> or log 2n. It must be n, it must be, reducing, it must be relaxing into n states because entropy is given by the energy or mass, which is Bekenstein Hawking formula, you don't have two n states to relax into. So you can't unitarily do it. Yeah? You can't have inverse two n different states relaxing into n possible states is of course uh, violating inverse, in, in, inversibility, yeah? inversibility. So it must be like this, and that avoid everything. Yeah? So if you extract here the one bit of information to Hawking states, if the microstate is odd, then uh, a Hawking state is R1. If microstate is even, Hawking state is R2. R1, R2, R1, R2. But the black hole state can be 1, 1, 2, 2, 3, 3, and dot, 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 two, n, n. And this evolution as a whole is unitary. It's clearly invertible. But you cannot separate the black hole state and the Hawking state, because then black hole psi 1 goes to psi star 1, and psi 2 also, go, also goes to psi star 1. You may think it's unitary. But now Hawking state is different. So as a whole evolution, it's still unitary. But this black hole state only has n, not 2n. So later, you can relax into smaller number of states, represented by smaller black hole uh, Bekenstein entropy, because mass is smaller. Okay? So this must be what's going on. And so this is saying that if you have a negative energy excitation, actually entropy is not 1 to 2n, but it's 1 to n. So that means that uh, entropy is uh, a negative. Okay? But negative entropy is OK, because negative entropy with respect to background value. So it's completely consistent. Negative energy carries negative entropy. Usually en uh, entropy is controlled by energy. Okay? So the black hole information extraction actually occur in a semi-classical level of the picture through ingoing negative information. It's so not really information like you're coming through and so on. That's, that is the key. Then you don't have any of the uh, uh, actually uh, inconsistency. So you can see at this point what was wrong with uh, uh, conventional Hawking pair creation picture, right? You have a positive and negative thing. At the horizon, one of the things is falling into the horizon, then you have Hawking. Of course, nobody literally believed this, like a heuristic uh, pair creation picture. But let me just uh, uh, highlight that what was really, what's really wrong with, the, with that picture. First of all, usually you think it's at the horizon this pair creation is happening. Therefore, one quantum is, is, uh, is entering into black hole. It's not. Really, the creation is happening at the edge of the zone, which is macroscopically away from the horizon. <laughs> okay, so far away, if it's, it's, a, it's a 20 kilometer black hole, then it's a 30 kilometer. I mean, it's in R, so it's not a proper distance, but it's, anyway, it's, it's like far away, and of course, it's a quantum. Wavelength is also big, so it's not like specific location at 3M, but wavelength is pretty big there. 
But that's what's happened. There, that's where this is happening. The other thing is that if it's a pair creation, created particle is entangled, right? If you have an electron and positron, spin left and spin right, right? It's always completely maximally entangled. But that's not the case, okay? The emitted quanta is R1, R2, and the state is one and one. And actually, this lack of entanglement between the created pair is a source of uh, information extraction. Okay? Because of that, you can extract the information from there consistently with unitarity and locality. So this means that you cannot describe this uh, uh, K index or something in semi-classical uh, semi fee theory. So some breakdown of the semi-classical picture being complete at large distance scale. But that breaking is subtle. Because you can always ask, oh, now I'm saying that this uh, uh, information, Hawking information extraction process is Hawking quantum M coming in, negative energy delta M minus, minus delta M going in. That's, that's the information extraction process. Let's think about the time reversal process. In a time reversal process, Hawking quantum of order delta M coming in, and negative energy delta M comes out, and then it's just pair annihilate in some sense, right? It's not really entangled, but it's a pair annihilate. And so that means that you may think if you send in soft quantum before, far before reaching to the horizon, it may be annihilated, okay? That's a huge violation of semi-classical field theory, if that were the case. But that is not true, because this usual Hawking emission process is a thermal entropy increasing process, usual, usual process. So this time reversal process must be analogous to something like ink in the water. It's very specific configuration. And you evolve, evolve, it goes to the corner. Okay? That's the time reversal. Of, okay? You have a very fine-tuned initial state. It can happen. But usually, that's not the case. Usual processes of sending in soft quantum is just go through. And then a semi-classical theory is really, really good, good, good way to, to describe. So the violation of semi-classical picture is pretty thorough. So it's not something like you can parameterize in a very simple, matter, simple way. Okay? So with this, let me just go, uh, a successful reference frame change is really possible because you don't, now don't have any uh, uh, obstacle of, of having informing frame. For example, if you have some frame which is falling from far from the horizon, it's just falling. And then it just has a very huge velocity when it passes the black hole horizon. So therefore, it's something like extracting. Suppose you have some uh, detector hovering close to the horizon and just clicking, 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 and uh, really extracting information. Like click, 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 because it's brusive. So you click, 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 very fast. But now this very fast clicking, this is a time, this is a time, this is time from short to time, click, 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 click. But from falling guys, this clicking happens at the space time scale of order m. Okay? The next clicking is over LM. It's huge time scale. Okay? So it's almost a Minkowski. So that's consistent with the equivalence principle. And this is the last slide before conclusion. So and one implication of that is actually the Hawking effect is not the UNU effect, as you might uh, have heard many times. But I, I claim it's not. Okay? Because in Hawking effect, if you hovering, if the detector is hovering very close to near, near the horizon, if you're falling in, then it looks like this clicking is like long distance. Because far, once click because of the large boost, it could click here and then distance m away the next click. So the clicking time scale is over m in a Hawking case. And at all the m, you have a curvature. Yeah? You have complete curvature. So you can have, you can have a deviation from Minkowski. You can have actually information to be extracted that way. On the other hand, in Umbu effect in Minkowski space, the curvature is exactly zero. So the clicking will not extract any information. That's not consistent, uh, inconsistent with the equivalence principle. You may think it's inconsistent, right? Hawking effect is gravity. Umbu effect is acceleration. Equivalence principle says that both are same. But equivalence principle says that if they are same at the single point. On the other hand, quantum state is a configuration of equal time hypersurface. It's a global information. The globally, it's different. Yeah? Globally, it's a different effect. Yeah, that's consistent with the uh, equivalent principle. So quantum mechanics and equivalence principle is very subtle, but they are consistent. So I have only one word. Uh, given this, this almost all thermal, what you think is a thermal radiation, a thermal matter and radi thermal radiation is actually space-time degrees of freedom. It's K. It's some stupid thing, yeah? which is not obeying a usual semi-classical equation motion. It is not describable in semi-classical field theory. So that looks like sometimes space-time. It's a slightly different M. Sometimes it looks like a matter, thermal, thermal radiation. It's some strange object. And that means that actual Boltzmann brain problem is not there. Because Boltzmann brain problem, if you know it, I, I will just skip, yeah? uh, if you know it. Boltzmann brain problem assumes that the docetal entropy, docetal thermal radiation obeys usual semi-classical equation motion. 
OK, so summarizing. So uh, uh, thinking about information uh, or file problem in the black hole quantum physics, I think we led to some specific picture for uh, the emergence of semi space time to the extent you can do in this semi classical level. Okay? So I'm not claiming, of course, microscopic, all these dynamics of Hamiltonian was, was uh, 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 known. But now this is a picture. So you have in the fundamental theory of quantum gravity, you have vast degrees of freedom. It's counted by Bekenstein Hawking entropy. This is way beyond something you can do at the semi level of packing semi classical matter. And you coarse grain, yeah? You just coarse grain, like coarse graining atomic configuration of the disk. And you coarse grain, leaving high enough energy matter, which clearly has identity as a matter in space time, and the coarse grain, the rest. That is what the semi classical theory was, quantum field theory on how space time. Okay? And this coarse grain is very subtle. That, uh, it's not like, oh, this region you coarse grain. No, it's just much more subtle thing as I explained in the time reversal picture of the Hawking emission. And then, of course, if you coarse grain also the quantum matter in quantum field theory, you can go to completely classical theory. So in that sense, quantum field theory is, of course, partial classicalization. You also classicalize only space time, keeping a quantum nature of matter and radiation. But that's a vast degrees of freedom of coarse graining. And black hole information concerns exactly these degrees of freedom. Okay? That's why, of course, minute use commit to a uh, uh, semi-classical picture, you toast. Okay? You, you have an amps paradox. From the beginning, that, that's not the right thing to discuss uh, these things. And these degrees of freedom, we don't really know what that is. Sometimes it looks like space-time, slightly different M, it's a K index. Sometimes like, it looks like a thermal radiation, because you can count the thermal radiation entropy. What that is, that's really the key understanding this will be a really, really key step towards uh, full understanding quantum theory of gravity. Thanks. Okay, so I think it's, uh, it's rather late and uh, the, the, most of the time, question time has been used by the talk. I think we're uh, having lunch next and so you're certainly welcome to talk to uh, Professor Yasunori during lunch. Thank you. If, if there's Sorry. one quick question and a quick answer, we will do that. <laughs> so, okay. If it's not quick, you can do it at lunch. <laughs> um, so in the 90s, I mean, when people were uh, thinking about this, um, so one attitude was that any reasonable quantum theory of gravity uh, in an asymptotically Minkowski space um, should be unitary in the sense that you have some initial state, which is pure, and then it evolves unitarily, and you have a final state, which is a PO, yeah. and the black hole could be viewed as some kind of resonance. Yes. And so if the initial state is PO, of course, the von Neumann entropy is zero. Yes. And under unitary evolution, it remains zero. Yes. So the black hole, therefore, ne is necessarily a mixed state. And uh, so you could think of the black hole as a resonance, which is, which is uh, entangled with its continuum. Yes. Uh, are you giving a microscopic dis description? Yeah, of the description, that, uh, the statement that, that okay, I have to be very quick. Uh, <laughs> and the statement of that, if you think semi-classically, that statement, and that means that this uh, mode B must be entangled with the C, that's exactly the same statement. You have to go back to pure state. But I'm saying that that B mode is not there in semi-classical picture. Rather, the C is entangled with the index K, which is what, what the exact value of M you can imagine that way. So, Paolo, please. Yes, so before clapping, uh, just uh, one information about the logistic for uh, the meal. So there will be two ways of getting uh, food. So people that uh, basically register for Pascos and uh, pay the, the registration fee, they will be, the food will be distributed on the terrace outside, while uh, local people or people that are financed by ICTP will get uh, the food through the standard uh, cafeteria. Anyway, just the two lines uh, eventually will be in the same place, which is uh, on the terrace, but uh, just these should avoid uh, lines. Okay, thanks. Let's thank uh, Yasunori Nomura again.